Hello my friends, Ghost Gen 3 here. Hey, today I thought I'd show you guys these. Obviously the main one I'm going to talk about is this. The Surefire 60 round magazine. And for 556-223. This is a little gift recently. Uh, I'm not a giant fan of these and I'll tell you why. I don't completely put them down. I think they have their use if they work. Uh, originally when these came out, I was aware of them. The 60 round and the um, 100 one, round one. And in the beginning, they had all kinds of problems. Failures of feet, failure ejects. Um, I mean, YouTube and the forums on online were going nuts. Personal friends of mine, you know, fellow law enforcement. Yeah, some bought them. The prices back then were extremely insane. They're still high for a 60-round magazine. Cheap as this goes right here uh, is about $111 on uh, Botash website. For the 100-round one, they sell for, I think, uh, 139 somewhere in there 140 so compared to others where I still see these like for the hundred for two hundred dollars on plus I've even seen them at 240 and uh, the 60 rounders I've seen them even for uh, 180 insane to be paying for something that's 60 rounds I'd rather have two uh, 30 round P mags you know and just do quick changes but that's me you know so <clears throat> I have these other mags here in my tack vest so I can show you guys the difference in sizes and uh, give you some specs on this one right here. I haven't tried this out yet, so I decided to do the video first just to show the differences between the magazines. I'm not sure if I'm even going to keep it. It was a nice gift. It's, it's very welcomed. If you know, I wouldn't mind for a bug out bag, you know, 60 rounds and uh, you know, keep it in there. It's ready to go. One thing I will say, um, unlike say, for example, uh, or before I get to that, let me show you this. Okay, so this is my tack vest, like, like many out there, and I have several different types. You see my other videos, I even have the chest type that's open, and uh, of course this one and a different one, black, that most are similar. So we, most of us know, like right here, the PMAX, here's one right here, and you can close it, it's Velcro, pretty much done. Uh, if I wanted to, I can get this back, put it inside, and I can keep this all open like this, and not worry about the flap. But that's not important. Now, you can actually fit two of these, which most of us know, in pretty much most AR type pockets. For, uh, I say AR, but you know, tactical type vests, because most will be for, uh, you know, it's made for any kind of carving AR type style rifle. So they'll fit in the closest. Now, that's great. Now, here on this side, what I have here, just to demonstrate, is a 40 round P Mag. Yeah, it's a bitchin' 40 round P Mag. Love it. I've actually shot this and tried it. There's a lot of videos on this, so that's why I didn't haven't done one on it. But uh, just so you guys know, I mean, awesome. This thing is awesome. Now, is it going to fit here? Yeah, it's going to fit. Can fit, you know, play, uh, magazine plate down. It's not going to close, as you can tell. It'll go down like this, and still not close. Yeah, is it going to hold in there if I need it to for emergencies? Yeah, it's going to hold there. It's not going to fall out. So just so you know, for some of you, it's, I mean, obviously big difference between uh, the 30 round uh, P mag and the 40, as you can tell right here. But awesome, I mean, I have not had a problem with P mags, period, even from the 20 rounders to the 10 rounds, all the way to the, uh, this P mag. So, P -mag Sorry about that folks, I got all kinds of wind here today. Hold on. Oh, that's kind of funny. So anyways, uh, we got really strong ones today. Anyway, so the main thing uh, I'm doing here is the, just, just the differences for attack vest, but uh, is the Surefire Magazine, the 60 rounder. I'm gonna give you some specs on it and show it to you while I'm giving the specs. A lot of my friends have been asking me about it and most reasons why people don't buy these are two reasons. Um, but let me give you a quick history of it. When they first came out, they had problems. Uh, failures of feed, malfunctions, that kind of stuff. And, you know, Surefire is an awesome company. Great flashlights, I have them. Uh, suppressors, you know, but this they have problems with. And so I had heard, I tried to actually verify this information for you guys, but I never got a response that they originally, after so many complaints, um, when they first came out with this product years ago, and the 100, the 100 round one, that they made some changes to it. Whatever they corrected, or if they even corrected it, I'm assuming they did, I cannot tell you. Uh, I wish I could, but I tried to get info on that and I did not get a response. Maybe they were, you know, they got a million emails 
so I, I can't say it's them but you know I still like Surefire for their flashlights of course anyways uh, I would not have bought one personally uh, like I said this was a gift recently so I thought I'd do a videotape for you guys and um, you know 111 is as cheap as I've seen this um, wow I could buy a bunch of P mags with that and ammo so to each his own I mean it's nice to have say emergency last ditch 60 rounds to fire you know till you're done now I'm gonna tell you some things I felt with this that I didn't like and show you actually but let's get through the little specs here while I hold this up and you guys can see it obviously 60 round mag it's uh, <coughs> aluminum the length on it is uh, 8.70 inches the width 1.66 inches now here's one uh, two questions I get asked a lot on this uh, before the video my friends the weight of this empty is 6.4 ounces okay kind of big I'm gonna compare it with a 30 round in a sec uh, the weight loaded is 2.02 pounds so I found that interesting because when I did load 60 rounds in here uh, I was like wow is it gonna make my AR front heavy and yeah to a point but hey, in an emergency you're not worried about that but the idea is there you know, 60 rounds. and uh, construction is mil spec hard anodized aluminum you can hear that and uh, it's got non-binding coil slings it's pretty trippy because I I'm not taking this apart but because uh, I might sell it and uh, but I will say this I've seen a guy on a uh, YouTube take it apart it's got a weird coil spring that's more unlike the flat mags that we all have from the metal to the P mags and others it looks like a slinky type you know but smaller of course in diameter so that's interesting and some even have a second type follower here like in this area it's really weird um, it has also a coating called cadmium on the springs and that's supposed to help with corrosion and resistance I looked that up and basically this coating there's nothing wet or anything like that you can tell they use it in a lot of metals to help metals not rust in a lot of products that are made not just in uh, weapons or anything like that so that's what that is this corrosion resistance and uh, proof the cadmium uh, does not require lubricants and as a polymer follower so what would somebody use this for you know let's say you get ambushed obviously fewer reloads you got 60 rounds so all that's great it's great you know um, it's got spot welding as you can tell right here you see these right here and uh, gray in color it's the only color it comes in so that's really interesting but one thing I didn't like and, and I'll tell you now and I'm gonna do a video after I test this because I figure if I'm gonna sell to um, one of my partners or somebody you know I hear that sometimes they don't work in other person's rifles, you know, ARs. Um, so, my friends know I'm honest guy, I would not sell junk. Uh, I can't stand people that do that. I think it's stupidity and pretty low life of people that knowingly sell um, a screwed up gun, malfunctioning gun, or a magazine just because you want the money out of it. That's, that's pretty low and sad. That, that's, that's ridiculous. I would never do that. You know what I do? When one of my mags goes bad, not a problem. Obviously, I don't want my mags to go bad, but if they do, and a few have throughout the years, just we're not working well. What I do is I take them, paint them, and I shoot them. I shoot them up as a target. Nobody will ever use them, and I get to have some fun shooting. And then I replace that uh, magazine, whether it's a 20 or 30. So I may test it in my rifle to see what happens, because uh, I'm actually very curious myself. Then I, at least I can tell whoever I sell it to that I did test it, and then I don't know if it's going to work in their rifle. Now one thing I didn't like about this is the follower and what happened with the springs. It has two different kinds in there and look it up on on, um, on YouTube and you'll see guys that'll take this apart. It's very interesting. I looked at the instructions. Now I'm being fair. I'm not saying it's not going to work. We'll see it but I will let you guys know definitely. Now we see the follower here on the PMAG 40 and the reason I picked the 40 is because obviously there's a lot of tension here when you put the rounds in. We all know the PMAG followers and you know non-tilting love this look at this there's no rounds in there this is a 40 I can do that with a 20 a 30 and a 10 and I can do it from both sides and it just smooth now the reason I'm showing you this is because and I'm gonna take these rounds out and show you something I didn't like most of you know on our metal mags uh, the USGI mags the 10 I mean the 20s and the 30s if they don't have that self that uh, follower that's non you know anti-tilt follower is what I'm trying to say um, sometimes you push with your finger and then the follower just goes at an angle gets stuck and you got to push with your finger and just unstuck it unstick it and it just sometimes it's not doing it or you put a knife in there or whatever it is and then get it back up 
that doesn't give me a positive feeling. That's what happened with this. And I just got this, like I said, from a, a friend. Right now, I'm, I don't have it fully loaded. By the way, one thing I did find uh, uh, somewhat impressive was I thought 60 rounds going to be a... Mm, just cut my thumb right here. Just on this right here. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Anyways, so we all know metal mass can be a little sharp right here on the edges. Well, I can't fake that one. But anyways, what I, I thought it was going to be very difficult to load 60 rounds and I was probably going to have to get my uh, Maglula. And, uh, huh. I'm going to stop this video for a little blood. Anyways, it was actually easy. I actually loaded this um, without a problem. Um, I have pretty strong fingers and hands, but regardless of that, I felt it wasn't that hard. I didn't, um, I didn't have that much problem uh, loading it. So I did it a couple times just to see. I wasn't going to do it in the video. It just takes a little bit. It does take a while, and. Uh, Oh, I should keep a first aid kit over here. So. <laughs> Anyways, it. I'm going to show you what I didn't like as soon as I can get these rounds out of here. And it did load up. I'm going to say this. 60 rounds, I loaded them up pretty easy. So with the spring, it wasn't that difficult uh, to take them out. That's another story. It's just a lot, a lot longer. And uh, But that's where I started wondering if I'm going to have problems... Uh, like I did just with a follower without the ropes, am I going to have problems, you know, with this thing shooting? So, like right now, I'm having problems getting this out, finally. Now, that's just removing them. I don't have that problem with P-Mags, I'll tell you that, or even some of my metal mags. All right, so, I don't know, before I bleed to death here. <laughs> All right, here's a follower. It's a polymer, you know, almost like the ones on the P-Mags, but not there. That will now, let me show you something I didn't like. Um, see that? Already, it's already pissing me off. Um, you know, we all know that the USGI mags and stuff do this without the, if you haven't replaced them with anti-tilt followers. Now, I haven't had problems with those. Um, maybe every now and then, one or two magazines throughout the years, and then I got rid of them. But it doesn't give me a positive feeling that it's doing this. And this thing is brand new. So now I'm trying to straighten it out. Look at this, it's just a bit. So I'm not putting the mag down yet, because I'm gonna test it, but th this, let's just say you had it unloaded and you need to load it. Forget it, might as well throw it at somebody because it's not helping. There we go, now I went back. So you just got to see what I felt. Imagine getting that brand new out of the package and that's what happens. I always put my finger down on these and push them on all my mags. I wanna feel that tension, Make sure that I got a good product. I could usually tell by the tension. You know, you can't always tell, but let's just say you push it and it goes all the way down so easy. We know there's going to be a problem because there's not going to be no tension to get those uh, 223s or 556s out of here, you know, through your rifle. So, as you just saw, now if I'm pushing here, of course the center is a little easier, but I'm controlling it. But look at that. There we go again. Oh, that's just not good. So let me load like, load like three rounds. The loading part is easy. It, it, like I said, I did the 60 rounds, so as you can tell, it's not that hard. But anyways, those are the problems I had with this. I didn't like that. Uh, it doesn't instill confidence in me. I'm a pretty fair guy, so I'm not going to put it down yet. Um, hopefully, I don't have any jams or anything or failure feeds in my AR rifle, all my mags. I, it's very rare I have problems. I have kept that thing maintenance up. I have tricked it out here and there, added some things, springs, whatever. And that rifle will shoot. I will actually be confident enough that if I use that rifle in self-defense mode or against zombies or whatever the hell, I'm aliens and other creatures, it's going to fire, period. So, you know, I'm one of those guys who takes care of my, my weapons and everything else and, you know, make them the best they can be and myself. But, like I said, I don't like this about it. I don't know why they didn't put some anti-tilt. I think that would have been kind of smart, you know. Um, but we'll see. So I will definitely do a shooting video on this and get back to you guys because I think it's important. And plus, like I said, I want to see if it works. And um, if I have problems with it, then I don't know if I'm stuck with it or maybe I'll do a deal with someone and then let them know what's wrong with it. Because I, I do not give gear or anything. You know, if it works in their rifle, great. If not, then, you know, I'll take it back or something. But um, if it doesn't work in my rifle, then 
you know, it's a nice gift, a very expensive gift. Um, wow, that'd be, what a shame, huh? But anyways, and, and to remove it, you just have to bend this, almost like the metal mags, pretty much the same thing. Right here, as you can see, this little lip. And then bend that up a little bit and then slide it out. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I want to give it a fair test and everything else. Uh, but like I said, it's already got little scratches. I haven't even dropped it or nothing. <laughs> and I do drop my mags when I train. I, I, I have read and see people saying all kinds of stuff. Oh, don't drop them. Your mags are going to get ruined. Um, well, I always say, my God, if you got to train these this way. If you want, put a pad on the, you know, on the ground so it'll you know, hit the, uh, the pad. No big. You're not going to have a pad there in real life. But here's my point. If you don't let your mags dropped, drop and you think they're going to fail because they fall, then the problem, and let's say that mag doesn't work just because it falls from, what, five feet, four feet from your AR down as you do in a magazine exchange, well, then your magazine has problems. I would never have jumped like that. I have dropped my mags from USGI metal mags to the P mags, exchange, do my, uh, <clears throat> put in a new mag. Those mags are good, man. When, now, if I'm shooting in a surface that has a lot of dirt and gravel, I will check those mags after I'm done shooting. When I get home, shake them. And once in a while, in one or two, you'll feel some dirt in there. Well, gee, what does that tell you? Open it up, get that dirt out, you know, any of that dust, and then you're good to go. So, but, you know, I've, I've heard some people say that. And I'm not here to argue with people or put anyone down, but come on, let's get real. You're not going to let your mag fall out while you, while you put in another fresh one because you think it's not going to work? What does that tell you? You either have junk or you're listening to idiots that have no clue what they're saying or doing. Some people just hear stuff and they pass it along and then some people just, it runs like fire. It's unreal. But anyways, I will drop this mag after I shoot it and let it fall. And then I'll put like three more rounds in it, put it up only because I have one and see how it does. I have no problem with it. I don't mind there's scratches on it. I do clean my mags from the outside. I do not lubricate them because what do you have to lubricate? It's a spring. <laughs> Usually what you lubricate is things that are going to be metal against metal, like your slide on a handgun, a pistol, uh, that's rubbing metal against metal. That's what lubricants are for. You're To do a spring, all you're going to do is attract dirt, you know, and um, dust bunnies and everything else. So that's just my little saying there. I trip out on the things people believe out there. Anyways, you're safe with them, like I said. Um, so anyways, here's a 60 round P mag. Oh, one other thing. Will it fit most of the AR type vests? Uh, from what I've found out with some of my friends, it doesn't some, and some it does. This one, as you can tell, I have two right here. These are 30 round P-Max, back to back. They fit. And one, of course. So I actually have to squeeze it in. It does fit, but because it is longer, it will not close. So um, most AR type, magazine type vests like this are similar, but just so you guys know, it will fit. It'll also fit, of course, this way downward with the follower down. And you got the big butt hanging out right there. And of course, it ain't gonna sit. I wouldn't carry it like that. Seems a lot easier to come out. It's not gonna come out unless I bend forward or go prone style. But if you're gonna do it and it does fit, that's the way to do it right there. Um, obviously, it's gonna stay open. So just bend it forward back here. You know, you can always grab it here and get it out when you have to. So with mine, it does fit. Um, anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, uh, I get on my little rants every now and then about things, but um, 40 round P-Mag. Here we go, look at the size of it right here. So this is my hand. So almost the 40 round P-Mag is just a little taller. Of course, the Surefire 60 rounds is fatter, wider. You can see the different angles. Look at the followers, and of course, anti-tilt. Can't go wrong with anti-tilt. I've replaced all the metal ones I could. There's some metal mags that you can't replace. It just, it's got a different uh, body um, a part in its uh, spine on some old Colt one, I believe it was, and I couldn't replace it, so that went to shit. Anyways, uh, so you can tell the thickness. I mean, I guys gave you guys the specs. Now, here's the, uh, let's compare it to the 30. Have them all together. There you go. So the P. P-Mag 40 is the tallest, then the Surefire, and then the 30 round right there. And then here we go on the top right there. So, yeah, I'm happy with 30 round P-Mags. 
but to each his own like I said if these surefire 60s work for you guys any of you guys that see this video let me know I'd love to hear your opinion on it like I said I haven't tried mine yet I'm going to and I will get back to you guys so I, I, I like to do videos not so much for myself or I don't have ego I'm a pretty simple guy but I have a lot of knowledge and skills that I like to share and I'm always learning I'm always learning from anybody out there to pick up good ideas as well and uh, I kind of like hearing somebody tell me something doesn't work or it may work or may not it gives me a heads up and then I can test it for myself uh, or some people that you learn who's credible uh, with me all you're gonna get is the truth I mean I just never liked this personally <laughs> the price is ridiculous I'll say that right now this this is not like it's some hardcore titanium. We all know titanium costs more even in guns that are made out of titanium, like the Airweights 38s and stuff like that. There's some titanium ones. And I can see that you told me this is made out of titanium or some alien space metal. Okay, I'll pay it. But come on, this is aluminum, man. I mean, 111 is the cheapest. Uh, I've seen them up to 180. Hell no. I got... <laughs> I could buy different, uh, a bunch of bags of whatever kind I want and ammo and you know other stuff. So the price is a, really a thumbs down on that. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely get back to you guys on this. I'm curious myself and uh, hopefully uh, it works. You guys take care. Come and check out more videos. I'm going to have a lot more. Uh, I haven't had time to ch uh, post others. And uh, subscribe. Click on the like button. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care and God bless.